Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see how to create a really interesting disintegration effect that can be used to simulate snow or sand maybe. We will see in this tutorial all the type flow simulation part, but if you want the same results than me, you can of course find on my Patreon the complete 3D file, as well as the After Effects compositing with particular effect and the procedural 2D smoke fog and more. Okay, let's go now for the tutorial. Ok so we are in 3ds Max and what we can see here is the shape I use for this disintegration, it's my logo. I will now open the type flow setup for this effect already created and we will see together the steps one by one. I used here a brush voxel which works well to fill shape with particles and I selected my shape with the pick. You have different presets at the bottom and I often use grains that work very well to fill in the gaps. We can here in Voxel change the spacing between each particle. I will stick with 0.4 for now. And then I created a position object by also selecting my shape and configuring the position in volume. If I activate it, we can see that we have a feeling of the shape. Very random. That's what I want. Then I create a shape operator to give a real shape to the particles by selecting Geosphere. And of course, I switch the display to Geometry to see how it looks. Perfect. I will now maybe increase the size of my sphere. Maybe 40. And now what I want is to cut out my shape in full or small group for the disintegration. I therefore created a cluster operator. I give a shannon name to retrieve this information later. I can activate Visualize Cluster to better see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to change the size of my voxel to really see the change. Great. I can now go down to the cluster option and configure the number of cell points I want. I can for example try 200 to have larger areas. I return to my basic value. What I also like to do is play around with fuzzing and noise to really add variation in the shape of these clusters. Ok, once it's good and we have a name for the channel, what we want is to activate our disintegration. I will therefore reactivate my shape. And we can see here that I created a sphere with a slight noise and that I animated this sphere with two keyframes to gradually activate my wall form. Perfect like that. Now to activate this in type flow, I created a surface test operator and I selected this activation sphere. I activate it. This operator is linked to a time test with a value and a variation of 5, which will just create a little variation when the particle will be activated for the disintegration. For the parameter, it's very simple. I just created a turbulence force with a rig strength and a scale of 0.6 and for the second a perlin with a bigger scale to have variation inside my force. Here are my parameters but it's of course up to you to try for yourself to see how it works for you. I will go back to my browse voxel and create the value to have fewer particles and navigate more easily to configure my effect. You can see here the force, the strength, I also added a slow operator which slowed down my disintegration a bit. I have here a value of 3 but if I increase the value you can see that it really slowed down my effect. 3 is a good value for me I think. Now what I've created is a particle bind in order to link my particle together. And what I'm going to do is deactivate enable clustering to see what happens. I activate it. And we can see here in our animation that we have a disintegration with bind and groups, but it's not very interesting because it does not use what I have created previously. I will therefore reactivate enable clustering with the correct channel. And there we see that we have something much more interesting. Really cool. We are getting closer to the final ID. An interesting thing to do is to play with the distance of the proximity bind, which makes it easy to create different results. 
Here we have a different version but also very interesting. But for me, I return to my basic value. You must also remember to activate Breakable which will allow you to break the bind of your particles according to the parameter you want. You can also add variation. Ok, fine. Our animation is cool and it's good for the particle bind I think. What we want now is to continue to break the bind but based on the velocity of our particles. For that I create a property test. I set the type to velocity magnitude. Greater. And I will put for example a value of 60. That is to say that any speed value above 60 will be automatically activated for the next event. I will now activate everything. And nothing happened because the value of 60 is too high for the moment. So if I lower it to maybe 20, we can see that you have a lot of particles that are no longer linked together. Here we have a variation of 50. If I set it to zero, we can see, we can see that nothing is happening. And if I raise the value to 100, now we can see that there are really lot of free particles. I return to my basic value, 50. And now we will see how the break was created. Here we have in the event for a particle break operator which will break the bind that we've created with the particle bind. If I disable particle break, we can see that the particle bind has returned to its initial state. For the particle break, I therefore switch the timing to continuous and I check that the bind is on all. I can now reactivate it. And what I also did was to duplicate the slow and the force so the particles in the event 4 continue to move in the same way as the other. I also added a scale in relative multiply and with the value close to 100 so that the particle gradually disappear. If I put a low value like 50, we can see that the particle disappear instantly. I will try with 90 and you can see the particle disappear here. It's still too fast so I think a value of 99 is perfect. Ok, everything looks fine for me. I'm just going back to my original value for the property test because I know it's work well with my very large number of particles. I now go to browse voxel and I pass my value to 0 0.18 and for the scale of the shape maybe 17. We have now a very interesting simulation. We will now see how to add a few more particles. I therefore have here a second type of setup which is identical to the first except that it does not have the last event. I will now activate it. And you can see here that there are a lot of very small particles. I disable the display of the event 1 because I don't want my form to be created. We can see here that it's the same setup and if I go to shape and increase the scale we can better see that we have the same animation. For the shape, I advise you to use a triangle shape in 2D and not a 3D shape since there will be very small particles. Don't hesitate to adjust your strength or the slow a little bit to give a little variation compared to the original tie flow. I'm going down the scale now. And I will increase the number of particles by lowering my voxel in the browse voxel operator. As you can see, there are a lot of small particles. I can now reactivate the first type setup. And we can see here that we have a superb disintegration with cluster, second separation, big and small particles, and a lot of details. Finally, my advice for you is to export these two simulations in TyCache before rendering. Like that, in case of problem or crash, you will not have different simulation. All you have to do now is create your light and camera, apply a texture and finally render. Ok guys, that's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. 
If you want to go further in this effect and in the final compositing, you can find all the files for this project and for the other on my Patreon. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work and you can of course follow me on Instagram if you want. See you soon for next tutorial guys. Bye.